Hi, my name is Sam Wright. I chose to study the master's degree in advanced child protection at the University of Kent because it pre presented an opportunity to work alongside multi-agency professionals, including social workers, police and international students. My dissertation, I undertook a second, secondary data analysis, which is a method used to examine available data that has already been collected and used for other purposes. My aim was to explore the impact of emotional literacy interventions and whether these interventions could help support with self-regulation. This was done with the aim to identify the most prominent factors and challenges for ad adolescents who choose to self-harm. For many, self-harm is described as an intentional, self-injurious or self-poisonous behaviour and determining prevalence, prevalence of self-harm is tricky because it is predominantly a private behaviour. What I discovered in the literature is that the definition of self-harm is somewhat contentious. For example, some studies will include suicide attempts, body piercing and body art as, as self-harming behaviours which others don't. And highlight that there's disagreement in terms in some of the more, ex more extreme and less extreme behaviours of self-harming behaviour. Also, according to some studies, children as young as seven can self-harm, although self-harming behaviours are reported to peak between 12 and 15 years old. However, looking through the literature, this also highlighted a clear contradiction with various age ranges included in different studies and a concern of under-reporting. The prevalence is debatable. And arguably, the, the vague definition of self-harming behaviour and hidden prevalence rates contrib contribute to a lack of understanding of how to support these self-harming children and adolescents. There are many reasons why children self-harm, such as alleviating unwanted emotions like so self low self-esteem, um, and increasing illusion and control of difficult times. Adolescents widely report that self-harming is a coping strategy when suffering from psychological and emotional distress, feeling it's the only option they have when they're overwhelmed by circumstances and experiences. All available studies describe feelings of how chronic low self-esteem are likely to increase exposure to a range of intensified emotional states, which may trigger acts of self-harm as a means of coping. Other reasons or contributing factors for self-harm, self-harming behaviours include, but are not limited to, poor mental health, such as depression, anxiety, um, victims of physical and emotional neglect, neglect, challenging family relationships and bullying, peer pressure and gender. All of these factors contribute to unpredictable and impulsive behaviour. The literature suggests there is association between self-regulation and low self-esteem with people who self-harm, which led me to explore emotional literacy, also known as emotional intelligence. The aim of the dissertation was to bring these two concepts together. Emotional literacy is a term describing children's ability to understand their own feelings whilst considering the feelings of those around them. Despite the emphasis on the role of emotional dysregulation and, de and deliberate self-harm in literature, very few studies have examined this relationship closely. Emotional literacy can be taught through the practice of targeted inter interventions and interactions which can focus on the awareness of emotion in their own self and others while developing self-regulation, empathy and resilience. Emotional literacy approaches could provide support sessions to help young people develop coping strategies that facilitate emotional demands more effectively. Along the way, learning skills such as self-awareness, acceptance, and the ability to verbalise those feelings and problem solve. Mentors and emotional literacy support assistants, also called ELSAs, are trained to plan and deliver these programmes to support these pupils in schools and educational settings with their emotional needs. So I've talked to you about self-harming behaviours and the importance of emotional literacy as a tool to consider supporting young people who self-harm. However, my dissertation illustrates that several areas where additional, more specific research would be really helpful. The challenge remains in understanding, foreseeing, preventing and defining self-harm behaviour. Future literature needs to have a clear definition of the terminology and further work could provide precise definition on self-harm and the universal use of terminology to gather accurate research and statistics. My review suggested there is a need to ensure professionals working with children and young people are fully trained and aware of self-harming behaviours. The literature has started making early links between impulsiveness, 
lack of emotional control and low emotional intelligence with self-harming behaviours. I would suggest that there is a need in the future to establish whether there are stronger commonalities between self-harm and poor emotional intelligence. In thinking about the impact this dissertation has had on my work, I found that professionals in education are beginning to have more of an understanding about the importance of well-being of a child and are starting to recognise the potential benefits of emotional literacy approaches in order to support young children, which is a great step in the right direction. These findings have been key to my service who have developed a team of established high-level teaching assistant, also known as HLTAs, who are solely responsible for focusing on the children or young person's individual needs and are regularly trained in emotional literacy interventions to ensure that they are fully equipped to be able to safely support our vulnerable cohorts.